Welcome to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their worlds and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. The following interview is designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. Your host, Derek Champagne, is the founder and CEO of The Artist Evolution, a full-service agency building successful brands, marketing tools, and campaigns, and also the author of the best-selling book, Don't Buy a Duck. And now, let's begin today's Leadership Series interview. Welcome to a special segment of the Business Leadership Series, our pro-athlete entrepreneur spotlight Today we have Randy Curran. He is a former professional athlete, NFL player, keynote speaker, author, and the CEO of Game Changer Coaching. Randy, thanks for spending a few minutes with us today. Man, thanks for having me. It's an honor. Hey, I wanted to talk to you. I love what you're doing with thought leadership on LinkedIn and in the in the, in the communities that you're speaking with. And so I thought we need to talk to this guy and see what he's doing. He's you've obviously had an amazing career as an athlete, but then. You're doing some great things in business and as an entrepreneur and a leader as well. And this is a business leadership series. So I wonder if we could start, though, if we can talk, just give us a few, give us the highlights that you want to share about your background that just stand out to you from from childhood until now. And, and then I'll ask you some specific questions about your transition as an entrepreneur. Yeah, definitely. Uh, when I, yeah, it's about highlights, man. Uh, so many thoughts run through my head. Uh, there's so many different ways that I could go with it. Uh, a lot of, uh, as I'm sure you're familiar with, Lots of challenges, lots of obstacles and adversities that I had to navigate in order to get to where I'm at now. And in society's eyes, we tend to focus on the finished product and uh, what see, people see at the surface. But when I think about my journey and everything I overcame, I definitely go back to my childhood, both my parents being Liberian immigrants. So you got that story of just the immigrants who come to this country with hopes, with dreams and aspirations. And uh, I was a product of that. So a lot of my foundation was seeing their hard work, their sacrifice, their selflessness of what they did for my family back home because there was a civil war that took place in Liberia. And so a lot of my early days were spent seeing them uh, bring a lot of my cousins, uncles, aunties to this country and not just giving them a plane ticket, but also helping them with their immigration papers, helping them start a whole new life. And um, that, that was, like I said, my beginnings. And when it came to uh, just my sports career, uh, I actually started off as a musician. I was a knucklehead. I was always in the street, and my mom <laughs> tried to do anything she could to keep me out of the street, so she really started me out with music first. I grew up playing the piano, the drums in church, and played in the orchestra in uh, middle school and high school. But once I found football, that was really something that just changed my life because I was the youngest of three. Um, had two older sisters, so I was always in the house with nothing but, but women, <laughs> which is great, but got bossed around, but um, I needed that outlet. And, um, yeah, so once I found football, I found a brotherhood. You know, I found a, a team of guys who, you know, like I said, became like a family, and it taught me so many life lessons and principles and things that I use to this day. And um, one thing it taught me was just that resilience and that mental toughness and um, just how to be persistent and mm. I was not the guy who was who showed up and was always a starter. Like I was the guy who um, was considered undersized my whole entire career. So every every team that I played on from high school to making it to University of Georgia to make it to the NFL, uh, I was the guy who showed up and was second string, third string bench warmer and worked my way up and mm. was persistent. And the guy who waited on the opportunity and um, typically the way that I tell everybody, typically the way that I got my opportunities was that we were down by three touchdowns. The guy ahead of me got hurt. It's always a scenario where I had to wait weeks and weeks and weeks, and I had to be persistent in those weeks and continue working on myself and believing mm -hmm. and having faith um, before I ever got that opportunity. And when the opportunity came, I was ready. And so I'm, I'm big, very big on just persistence, on the mindset, on – you know, uh, performing consistently and having a vision, all those things that really lead to, mm. I feel like, sustainable uh, success. And then I'm also a, a product of the community as well. I have tons of coaches, uh, teammates, mentors, uh, teachers, pastors that really poured into me and, and helped me um, during the tough times when, you know, my, my dad lost his business and my mom almost died at one point. There's so many people, so I'm very big on serving and on just using your platform and your influence to have an impact on everyone around you. So that's a little bit about my background. 
Well, thanks for sharing that. And so many things pop out. One is I share a kindred love of music, a former, my former career. I was in music for many years and that was what I did professionally for a long time. And that was my outlet as a child uh, and, and was huge for me and my brother. So thanks for sharing that. Wow. I can relate to that. Uh, you talk yeah. about, you know, not being the, maybe the first chosen, but being ready. And, and we have an internship program right. here and I see so many young college kids coming through and they just feel the weight of the world on their shoulders and they, they have to have it all figured out and they want the perfect job right. to come in front of them. And, and I always tell them about the zigs and zags I had in my life too, and that you need to be ready. I love your, I love that story. I mean, you were ready for when you were called, you did all the hard work so that when the, when the opportunity came up, you were the one that was picked, but, but you wouldn't yeah. have that opportunity if you hadn't been doing the hard work and putting that in that commitment to excellence. Yeah, that's it, man. And, and I've uh, grown to, to coin that phrase is operating at the level of your vision. Hmm. And to, to me, that means long before you ever get to that place where you want to be in life. Uh, when you think about 10 years down the road, you have to ask yourself what that requires of you. And then you have to think about every single detail of it. Like if I want to be a CEO 10 years from now, if I wanted to be a starter, you know, by the end of that season at, uh, at Georgia as a freshman, I had to ask myself, how do I need to operate? And I, at that point, I started operating as if I was a starter at that time, even though I was scout team, you know. So even though the coaches weren't acknowledging me, even though I, I wasn't getting the reps I wanted, even though I wasn't getting on the field, I was still getting in the weight room, getting in the film room, and I would literally stand behind the starters, 10 feet behind them, and mimic their every move. And so by the time, like, I literally believe that having that approach, the only thing that separates you from getting to where you want to be is time. And uh, so many people allow just their current circumstance to dictate, like, the level of motivation that they have and the level of dedication that they have. They'll say things like, oh, I'm not getting paid for this or, you know, this person, mm -hmm. so-and-so isn't acknowledging me or that, that person got the promotion and I didn't, and they just get down and they let their environment and whatever culture they're in, you know, dictate how they approach life. And I'm just like, you know, you got to operate at the level of your vision. You have to set uh, allow your vision to set the standard, not the – that's your environment. Man, the, the, in a few minutes, I want to jump in and ask you more about the pro athlete entrepreneur transition. But but first, I have a few other questions. Yeah. But operating at the level of your vision, it's such great advice. It's it's from a business standpoint, that's everything for us as we try to grow and motivate our team and the things we do. But I follow yeah. your, I follow your content. It's it's great on on LinkedIn and other platforms. I want to add, I want to touch on a few things and then we'll jump into the pro athlete yeah. entrepreneur transition side. But you talk about I always like to ask about setbacks and disappointment and how you deal with it. You talked about a lot of people want to see the finished product, but sometimes uh, I like to pull back a little bit and, and say, but what happened during some of those moments that got you in that mindset to get there? You talk about in 2011 yeah. being a free agent, unemployed for the first time. I know that's a tough mm -hmm. transition, being one of the toughest moments of your life. I've got some for me that seem like real low points too that I've, I share openly on the show and how I got through them. Yeah. It, tell me Tell me about that mindset. You, 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 you're in a tough moment in your life, toughest. You're, you're doing a self-inventory mm -hmm. of your skills and your talents. Where the heck do I go from here? It's easy to second-guess yourself when you're starting a whole new journey, and then you start building right. a brand. Just tell me the mindset there, even some of the uncertainty. And we'll, we'll keep it positive, but I, I just want to hear what, what that moment was like for you now you got past it. Oh, man. Uh, the, the first thing, and I think this is true for every man, like, I always tell people, if you want to strip a man of like his identity and his confidence and his motivation, take him away from what he does, mm. you know, strip him away from his ability to do what he does. And I went through that whole entire just mind shift of um, feeling valued or not feeling valued and having to re-identify like my self-worth. Mm. Like where did my worth come from? Was it from the Jersey or was it, you know, was I enough? Did I have the skill sets? And I think, that's one of the toughest hurdles to overcome uh, when you do become jobless or you do lose that business or you do lose a relationship. It's like you literally have to sit down and ask yourself, who am I, mm. you know, outside, away from these things. And so that was one of the biggest challenges. Once I sat down and I identified, and that's why I had to do that self inventory because so much of my life and the validation I received and the worth I received was from what I did on the field. And that's true for so many people there self-worth comes from their GPA or it comes from being, you know, having a certain title. And when somebody asks them what they're doing, they, they, you know, excitingly and boastfully say, Oh, I'm a executive for this or whatever. And when you take that away, man, it's so, it's such a hard mm. thing to deal with uh, psychologically, just not, you know, somebody asking you that, that simple question, what are you doing? So what do you do? 
and you don't have an answer right. like that alone is a challenge man right. and so um i had to like i said i had to identify my value and i had to re re uh, i guess um reclassify what being a free agent was and, and seeing it as a time that was a benefit and not something that was bad or something that was meant to destroy me and uh, i also the second thing that really helped me man was um besides faith of course was just having compassion uh, when I started to sit down and, and evaluate myself and my life, I started thinking about so many other people who would be in that same position. And I thought about how could I reach them? How could I use where I'm at now to add value to them, to encourage them when they get in that position? And I'll tell you, man, when you take that approach, it don't matter how depressed you are about life. I feel like when you think about other people who are in that same position, who you could help by overcoming what you're going through, it changes everything. And so that's when I decided to like write my first book and, you know, actually create something as I was going through my, my experience to impact somebody else. Cause I knew there'd be other people who would go through the same thing. And, you know, my, my dad, I saw my dad go through it. Mm. He lost his business after like 10 years and uh, went into a deep depression. Uh, you know, it was heavy drinking. I mean, so many people like that students mm. who leave college and they end up at their parents' basement you know, life doesn't go out, go the way they want it to, or people who go through retirement and they're just lost. I mean, there's so many situations like that where um, you're like a free agent. And so I decided that I would use that, the situation I was in as basically a metaphor for life and uh, use it to impact people. I love that you're doing this. And I wish that you had been around when I was going through a tough transition too, because I was leaving the music industry. And I, I similarly, when someone would say, what do you do? I didn't know how to introduce myself. I had been, right. I, 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 I loved my identity. And, and I was mm -hmm. sitting with a group of men last month and I, I've had them raise their hands if they were happy from a seven to a 10 in their lives. And every one of them that was a seven to 10 or higher was because of their job. And those that were unsatisfied was because they weren't right. happy with their job. And, and that just had me re-exploring what does our identity look like? How do we, how, how can we shift that? Or what does it look like in major transitions so that we don't fall into some of the pitfalls you described of, of addiction or some of the other things that are easy to go to self-medicate so that we don't have to kind of do the tough work that you did. I love that you're doing right. the tough work. I love that you're sharing it. On that note, you talk about leveraging gifts and resources, and you kind of talked mm -hmm. about that in a minute, but dig into that a little bit more. What does that mean to to go in inventory and then and then uh, whether you're a student, an athlete, an entrepreneur, a business professional, you know, life yeah. can beat you down. What, what, what do you, how do you do that inventory and what does that look like? Yeah, man, that's a great question. I think so many times, like with our daily jobs and even being in the position of an athlete or entertainer, like your wins are defined by that finished product in, in terms of like the money that you receive, the numbers in terms of how many people are watching you or how many people recognize you or mm. how many times you're promoted. And a lot of times when you do that, you totally disregard and miss out on the true value of like the skills that you're really building. And when it came to football, like, of course, uh, for, for me playing linebacker, it was, it was about, you know, how many tackles I made per game. It was about, uh, can I get to this second contract? Can I play in the NFL for 10 years? And then from there is, can I make it to Hall of Fame? Like, it is never a never-ending rat race <laughs> <laughs> when, right. when you're looking at the external. But internally, there's so many intangible assets that I, I, I gained. Like, when I looked at it, I'm just like, man, I've learned the ability to bounce back from adversity. I've learned the ability to have self-discipline, uh, teamwork, being able to work with others. I mean, being able to... You know, uh, even like I didn't even think about this till maybe three years ago. But as as a linebacker, like we would break down statistics and tendencies of every team that we play, and that that's to me business intelligence all day. Um, so just thinking about little peeling back the layers and really uh, uncovering your experience and seeing like the true values that you have that can translate to uh, other industries is huge. And so many people don't do that, and so they walk away from their job or they walk away in their business feeling like man i didn't gain anything this business failed when in reality like you have all these skills and these gifts now mm -hmm. to where you can have literally five streams of revenue if you just sat down and really mapped it out so um yeah that's, that's something that i did for myself that really made me just split the script and made me realize that i'm not down like i'm actually in an <laughs> amazing position right now right I, I love that i love that that you know, this uh, Jen Grisanti, who has been on our show before, she's she's helped sell 60 pilots. She's done a lot of TV shows. And, and uh, she talks, mm. she wrote a book about being the hero in your own story. And even in the low moments, you're still the active hero. 
and every story needs right. a hero. And so even in the low parts, you know that there's going to be a resolution if you understand that that's the spot you're in and you're learning and, you're, and you understand your role in all of it. And I, I mm-hmm. love that you've done that and, you, and you've got that operating at the level of your vision, uh, even regardless of what you're doing or what point in, in time you're at. So let's transition for just a minute, a few more questions for you. Uh, let's, let's, let's talk about the pro athlete entrepreneur side and you answer some of my questions. I was going to ask you, how has your background of being a pro athlete Im- impacted you as an entrepreneur? Uh, if you want to expound on that, yeah. great. You did share some things, but I never even thought about the statistics side and the, and looking at the, from yeah. the line, from the linebacker standpoint, but what else, what else has impacted you as an entrepreneur? Yeah. I mean, from the standpoint of being in the position of being at the highest level in the NFL, that prepared me for entrepreneurship like no other. I mean, you're talking about an environment where you go in week to week and you don't know if you're going to be there or not, and you can never, ever get comfortable. You always have to be uh, evaluating yourself and evaluating your competition. So knowing your competitive edge, uh, which for me is like studying your target audience as an entrepreneur, uh, and then just constantly being of the mindset of growth and, and thinking about how can I improve so many businesses fail because they get comfortable. They, you know, they're, <clears throat> they're hitting the numbers and, you know, they all of a sudden get lax. They stop doing the things that got them to where they are. And as a linebacker, I can never do that. The minute that you get comfortable, you're going home. You're getting that right. plane ticket. Right. And so just uh, having that mindset. And I really, I, I even broke down, you know, Rennie, who were you as a linebacker? What types of things set you apart? my ability to be relentless, my ability to get back and have that next play mentality, my ability to always look for solutions. Uh, going against six, eight, 300 pound linemen, like I always had to <laughs> uh, think about my solutions and, and those different things. So I take that same approach, like all those things that made me great on the field as a linebacker, I literally apply it to entrepreneurship. And I wake up every single day, like in my mind, I'm still hunting. I'm still, uh, it's still a game, you know, and a game that I'm, I'm trying to be the best at. And so those are some of the things that, that really helped me as an athlete. And I believe uh, the same principles apply to any business and any sales team. Uh, such great advice. And you, you answered so several of my questions before I even asked them. I really appreciate you sharing today. What, let's, let's talk to other pro athletes that are looking at going into their own venture or that may be going to transition. What's your best mm-hmm. advice for them as they're, as they're looking at what their next options are, specifically to starting a business, but also in the transition of their life right now? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would say like you got to think about what made you great in your past life. Like you got to think about those transferable skills. Um, one of the things we struggle with too that we don't even realize is that when we get out on our own, when we leave that team, so many of us just isolate ourselves. Like we we stop connecting with the teammates. We we just kind of go into this dark place because we're in survival mode. Like we're in panic mode because we don't know how our skills translate. Uh, into the real world and so i would suggest man you got to keep that team mindset like you got to continue to surround yourself with guys who've been there before like we a lot of us have that ego where it's like um <laughs> you know we could be a down or whatever if you talk to us, we're gonna be like man i'm good and it's part of that culture that we've been in that conditioning that we have to mm-hmm. says unless you are like you cannot move and cannot operate you better keep your mouth shut and you better suck it up and keep going but it, it hurts us, you know, we get out into the real world. So I would suggest that first thing you need to do when you get out, when you're trying to transition, and you've got to surround yourself with guys who've been through it, mentors, folks who can pour into you, keep that same team mindset. And then you got to keep the same routine to, to an extent. Like when I think mm-hmm. about our, our, daily, our day-to-day as athletes, like we had every single minute accounted for. That, and that means like when you go into the weight room, you know exactly what time. You know what time you're supposed to be in the training room. You know what time you're supposed to, you know, look at film. You know what down at distance, like, you're going to go over that day. What statistics you're going to look at. You know, like, when you're going to get warmed up. Like, we have everything down to a T. So I suggest when you are transitioning as well, you have to take the same approach. You have to have a routine, a schedule, and really uh, allot that time for different things to build yourself, uh, to keep working out, to connect with people, to network. Like, listing all those things out is huge. And the last thing I would say is you have to reevaluate your values mm. uh, as an, you know, when you leave from being in that world of, of sports and being an athlete and being an entertainer uh, and you get out into the real world, you, you just have to re <laughs> reevaluate yourself, man. And, and certain things that matter in that world just do not matter in the real world. And then having a new vision for yourself, all those things uh, just really 
make a difference. And until you evaluate like your new values and like what matters most in life, uh, I feel like you'll always be kind of confused and you'll always kind of be lost until you get that clarity when it comes to it. So Man. those are some of my suggestions. Yeah. Randy, what you're sharing is, is uh, it's value that can make or break a person. And and so I appreciate right. you sharing that. I, I myself have had eight companies. I, I failed at four of them and I can always point back to, uh, to my, my unwillingness to bring others around me. And, uh, right. if, and people ask me, what would you tell Derek? 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I said he probably wouldn't have listened, but I would have told him, don't do this in isolation. Don't do this alone and bring better people around you. So, man, you are right. way ahead of the game. And I appreciate you sharing this. Hey, last thing, tell us a little bit about your current business and how uh, those listening can learn more about you. Yeah, definitely, man. So on the personal side, uh, for my personal brand, personal business, I do the keynote speeches, the workshops, uh, and also the one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's all centered around personal development. So that's leadership, performance personal branding, uh, anything that will help a person take their life or their business or their team to the uh, next level, personally or professionally. And then outside of that, I also work with different companies in a strategic partnership role, whether that's helping them close a deal or, you know, setting up uh, with them at a conference and being a lead generator for them. Um, if we have the same target audience uh, or being a brand ambassador. So that's, that's a lot of what I do. I have a podcast as well, a blog, like, do a lot of things. So I always love to connect with people, love going to networking events and, and hosting them as well. So that's a little bit about my personal brand and, and whatnot. And if anybody's interested in uh, finding more about what I do, my website is com, and that's R-E-N-N-I-E-C-U-R-R-A-N.com. Randy, thank you so much. We will put uh, all of your contact information that's out there, uh, that's public out there on uh, the show notes so that the, that uh, our listeners can go and look at that. Thanks again, man, for being our guest. We appreciate your time and the wisdom you shared. And I look forward to following the thanks. next great things that you continue to do. Yes, sir. Thanks so much, Doug. I appreciate you. Thank you. Take care. You've been listening to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their worlds and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. This interview was designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. Derek Champagne here. I want to connect with you if you're listening to the Business Leadership Series. We can connect on LinkedIn or send me a message at Derek at DerekChampagne.com. I look forward to connecting.